Hello everyone, my name is Skalti, and today we're going to be going over a basic steel factory creating 90 steel beams and 80 steel pipes per minute. I hope you enjoy. Alright, to get this build started, let's go over what we're going to need for the factory. We're going to need at least 4 Mark 1 miners, and that would be at 200% speed. So that way we can get 240 ore per node off of a pure node. If you have the Mark II miners, by all means, use those. You'll save a little bit of energy, or power required. We're also going to need 12 foundries and 10 constructors, and those will all be at 100% speed. And the total power draw, you're using the Mark I miners at 200% overclock. It'll be 292.6 megawatts. If you are using the Mark II miners, that'll be 280, and that is at least... If you do any kind of variation, you may or may not be using additional power. In terms of the actual input requirements for the factory, you're going to need 480 iron ore, as well as 480 coal, in order to make our steel ingots. Additionally, the space you're going to want for the factory is a 5 by 13 foundational area. And as you can see in front of us, we have a 2 foundation height chunked out of the middle we have our inputs coming in from below on either end we have our coal at that far end we have our iron ore over here and we just have them being routed via a bus over and up into our factory keeping our walk space here nice and clean And when it comes to the belting, we're going to be able to load balance all of this. So we're essentially going to be taking each line of 240, splitting it up six times, and that'll essentially equivalent or equal out to 45 or per minute per line. All right, before we do any of the belt work underneath, we're going to need our foundries in place first. And so we have 12 foundries we need to place and we're going to be placing those essentially every other foundation we cannot join them next to each other due to a clearance issue while also having them line up with the conveyor walls below them so we're going to be starting with this foundation here we're going to start with our two wall conveyor a normal wall two wall conveyor and repeat normal walls on the short edge and then mirror the other side. And then we just take our 8x1 foundations and fill in the middle. And then when it comes to placing the foundries on top, you want to make sure that they are hanging off by just a little bit, like so. So that way when we place our lifts, you can hear the beep and they snap cleanly to the wall below and repeat that 11 more times And then when it comes to belting these up, we're going to group these in four groups of three. And we want the outputs running to the short end, so we're going to take our mergers, going towards the short end, place them in front of the first two in each quadrant. Leave these three, or I'm sorry, leave these four. Then repeat over here, facing the opposite direction. and then get these all belted up and when it comes to anything from the second foundation or from the second foundry to the edge uh use mark two belts so that way you're not actually bottlenecking your output since each of these provides 45 steel ingots per minute and from here you can just use mark ones if you want to use mark twos throughout by all means feel free
just like that. So for the foundries, we're going to do some load balancing. If you choose not to do so, you can definitely use an array system, but the balancing is relatively simple in terms of how the belting split, it's just a matter of getting it to work in this space provided. So essentially our goal is to take each individual line of 240 and split it up into six different outputs, or therefore inputs, into the uh, foundries, or 40 or per belt per minute. And so to get us started off, what we're going to do is take an 8x4 foundation, place it on the middle one here, three foundations in from the input, do two more, one on each side of the long edge of the factory, another on the back toward the middle, and then another one on top of that. And then on the foundation closest to the input, we're going to take two splitters and place them on the back half of the foundation. And then behind those, we're going to take our Mark II lifts and bring those up. And get these connected together. So for the input here, you want to make sure you're using a Mark III belt. If you don't have the Mark III belts, available for at least the materials to make them yet you can definitely use mark II for now and they just upgrade them after this factory runs for a little bit but from here on use the mark II belts to get these connected up and then on each of these lifts here we're going to take a splitter on the side foundation on the back quadrant away from the lift Place it here, repeat the same thing on the opposite side here, and then get these connected together. And then essentially this will be splitting up into three of the foundries here, so at this lift here we're going to take our Mark 1 belt, bring it down, and you hear the beep so it snaps directly to the merger to the splitter, which is pretty fantastic. And then to keep things organized, since this is on the left, based on where our input is, on the left side, we're going to repeat that. We're just going to bring it down the one step in line with the previous lift we just built and the splitter. And get this connected up. And then repeat the same thing over here. Lift. And belt. And then we can go ahead and delete this foundation here. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And then from these splitters that we built near our input, we're going to take our lifts just on the edge of the silver girder here, silver grate. Bring it up and then into the middle. Do that on each side. Get these connected up with Mark II belts. Oh, I faced that the wrong way. And that's where this second foundation here comes in. So we're going to be taking lifts and bringing it over here and do not bring it to the edge but bring it one step in and this will enable us to take our mark two lifts and bring everything down here into the middle and then we can delete all of these foundations and then essentially we'll be running this now to the opposite side and so for that, what we're going to do is essentially repeat this whole process so that way we can make sure that any of the belts running from here over to here are not conflicting. So now we have a symmetrical pattern on each side. And so now it's just a matter of routing these to the opposite side and so that's where these uh, stackable conveyor poles can come in handy. So essentially, and you can kind of do this however you'd so like, I just like to do it 
uh, so it's relatively symmetrical on each side. So I'm going to take this and route it up and over. Then down over to the side here. Make sure it's relatively symmetrical, so it's a little couple steps in. Like so. Then I'll just take this one, bring it here. Through. This essentially will connect over to a splitter, so we'll repeat this one more time. Stuck on? Ah. So we'll leave that for now, and then essentially, like we did here, but just down here on the floor, we're going to take our splitters, place those in line, we'll bring down our lift. Then I'll take these and I'll face these inward. Just to ensure there's no kind of conflict. Get the cables routed over. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, belts. So that side's complete and then we can take this and run it. Whoop. Just like that. Repeat the same process over here. opposite side. That is essentially all of the belting that we need for the foundries, so now we just have to go ahead and head out. And it is now time to start our second floor. Alright, now that we have the first floor complete, it's time to bring our steel ingots up to the second floor, and in order to get that started, we're going to take an 8x4 foundation, and we're going to build that up from the floor that the foundries are on, build that up four times. And then next to that foundation, we're going to take an 8x1 and build it four times. So that way we get a matching height. We'll get rid of the two 8x1s in the middle, and the other 8x4 foundations that we built. And this essentially gives us the start of our sandwich layer. And you want to build these out to the same area below where our foundries are located. That is an 11 by 3 space. And when building the sandwich layer, you want to make sure that you build both layers before you do any of the belt work. Since we are going to be using some splitters, if you build just the bottom layer, and then build a splitter, and then attempt to complete the second layer, you will not be able to place the foundations due to a clearance issue. Okay. And then when it comes to placing our constructors, before we do any of the belting down below, we are essentially going to be placing four different groups. We're going to do a group of three here, here, and then a group of two here, and here. So we want to get our walls in place first. We're going to do our single wall conveyors. Normal wall here in the center. And three more on each on this side. Again in the center, a normal wall. Two wall conveyors on each side. And then we can get our constructors in place. And when placing these, similar to below, you want to make sure that these are hanging off by just a little bit, where these little feet here are overhanging. So that way when we get our lifts in place, they will snap directly to the walls below. Now we'll get our lifts in place. 
and then we'll bring up our resources from below. So on this short end here, we're going to take our two walking bear. And using our Mark II lifts, bring these up. Oops, walls help you build those first. And now we're ready to do our belting down here in the middle. And so the recipe for the steel beam is 60 steel ingots per minute. And so essentially we will need 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, and 60. However, we have a line of 120 per belt coming up. So essentially what we're going to do for these two here, we're going to take our splitter and get that placed. And I'll bring it to the edge of the foundation here bring our Mark 1 belts down and in and bring our Mark 2 belt up and over and so I position it against the edge of the foundation here so that way this is a nice 90 degree bend. We can go ahead and repeat the same thing on the opposite side here again with the two lifts closest to the input coming up. Oops. And then for this belt coming up here, this is essentially going to get routed into the middle here. So I'll bring my splitter back essentially to where the middle foundation is, like so. And then just run this all the way down. And then run these into each lift. And then for this last lift coming up, this will be for our steel pipes, and those require 30 per minute. So 120 divided by four gives us our 30. So we're going to take our splitter and place it in between the two lifts on each side. And when placing the splitter, you wanna make sure that it is not placed any closer than the middle of this foundation, otherwise you will get an invalid shape. Do the other pair over here. And then in between, in the middle or kind of wherever you'd like to do so, go ahead and place a splitter. You look at the nice 90 degree, but can't see it and therefore it doesn't exist. We'll just bring this out here to the... Well, let's see, can we get that? Nope, it clips a little bit. That's fine. Can't see it, right? Oh, it does not fit. Perfect. And before we place this, I'm gonna switch sides so that way there are no belts between me and my exit. And everything is belted up, so now we can go ahead and leave and get this all enclosed. Just like that. Now for the output of the factory, whether you want to store it or relocate it somewhere else, that is up to you. In this instance, I like to store it because this factory for me is going to be used as construction material. I do not want this being used elsewhere uh, in, a, in a different factory. I want to be able to store this. So what I'm going to do if you've seen my encased steel beams factory, this will look somewhat familiar, but I'm going to have my final product run off of this edge, come down and in, and then out the side here into where I'll actually be storing it. So what I'm gonna do for the belting here is I'm going to essentially take a merger and merge the steel beams into a single line uh, towards the center. I'll put one here in front of the steel pipe. Same thing on the opposite side here. Run these all together. I 
and our output is going to be 90 steel beams so each side is going to be producing 45 so we can just use mark one belts for all of this to get these to align up essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a merger with the steel beams and I'm going to face it actually in the opposite direction going off this way toward the back of the battery battery <laughs> factory and then the steel pipes I will merge and this will be going toward the front side of the factory so then here get these connected up and then on the merger what we're going to be doing is taking a lift this is where you want to use the mark 2 lift and just bring it up and over and we'll bring our steel pipes here to the edge and so we want to use a mark 2 belt as well bring it all the way to the edge of the floor here and then down below I'm going to remove this wall. I'm going to replace it with a double wall. And then at least for the steel pipes for the moment, we're going to bring our Mark II lift down. And that'll connect right in. And then I already have pre-built the start of our storage area. Delete this wall. I'm going to come into the inside here. And in order to uh, before we get that built, in order to ensure that the lift for the steel beams is aligned correctly, we're going to temporarily place a lift here, coming down. Because if you do not have a preset uh, direction for the lift, based on where you start the lift, that becomes the input. And wherever you move the lift to is the output, based on the green arrows you can see there. But because we have this lift in place already, where this is essentially an input into the lift. When we place this lift, you can see that the color of the arrows has changed, so that way the top is an input. And then we get this lined up with the lift that we built here for our steel beams. We get that connected. And we'll go ahead back down into the inside. We can remove this lift, bring in our two wall conveyor, Actually, I'm sorry. What we're going to do is take out these walls, use a single wall conveyor here and here, and then these will be coming down, facing toward those walls. Again, connect up with the Mark II belts. Now we can leave and enclose this. And then I'm going to build out this space here. And get our storage containers in place. And so when placing these, since we're going to be enclosing them up, you can see the white hitbox around the storage container. We do not want it facing as it is here right up against the edge of the foundation because we want to build a wall here. So what that means we're going to need to do is take it and build it not here, but take it one step in and construct that. Repeat over here. And now enclose these with our walls. And then here is going to be our wall conveyor. Normal wall. Normal walls on the outside here. And then this can just be any speed belt you so choose. But this is to at least have the items feed out of the storage container. And this way you know specifically which container contains which item. And then repeat the same process on the opposite side here. is effectively build complete. I'm going to leave this a little unfinished and put the finishing touches on. 
go ahead and put some walls on the outside and get all of the electricity routed and getting this factory up and running. And so with that, I'll see you guys on the other side. Alright, and that'll wrap up our guide. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found some value in this tutorial. If you did, feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. If there's anything you want to see specifically in the future, or if you have any questions about this build, leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys again for watching. Take care.